Trustees of the Aquinas Institute are responding tonight to a culture war controversy that's dividing its families, students, and alumni. The trustees say they are, quote, committed to unifying our beloved school. As the Rochester Beacon first reported, a debate was ignited when a wealthy alum spoke at Aquinas in November. Robert Augustinelli's comments reflected his desire and that of some others to restore what they say are Christian core values and academic freedom at the school. Augustinelli spoke to 13 Wham's Ginny Ryan last week, standing by his remark. I mean, the founders of Black Lives Matter are, are Marxist, dedicated Marxists. They belong in Cuba, not the United States. By illustration, the critical race theory is a completely false ethic. And, you know, the, the, this, this, the LGBT movement is an attempt to invert the, the, the world. It doesn't mean that you prejudice against those people, but it doesn't mean you change the values of which the nation is raised on. Within hours of Augustinelli's speech, the Aquinas president sent an email to families saying it did not reflect the opinions, beliefs and viewpoints of the faculty, staff and administration. New tonight, the Aquinas trustees' response to two petitions, one in support of and one opposing Augustinelli's views. It reads in part, We are committed to unifying our beloved school in accordance with our Catholic faith. Aquinas fosters a school community that values all viewpoints. We fully believe that you, as well as every person who signed petitions or contacted the school, has the best intentions for and cares about Aquinas. Aquinas alumnus and parent Michael Kennedy, who was concerned with how Augustinelli was treated by the school, responded to the Board of Trustees statement, saying, We consider this matter as serious and indeed urgent. In anticipation of your fuller consideration, we expect that this matter must be discussed in person and with full participation of the parents and alumni as signatories to this plea. And so the school says it will be seeking input and feedback from those who signed both petitions, as well as the rest of the Aquinas community. The new statement from the Board of Trustees and responses from both Mr. Kennedy and Mr. Augustinelli can be found in an updated version of Ginny Ryan's story on 13wham.com. Also tonight, fights in and outside Wilson Magnet High School, prompting a new call to get to the root of it. Our students need more social and emotional supports. The teachers union is now making school safety the number one priority as it begins contract negotiations with the district. No one was seriously injured in today's fights. A school safety officer was treated for an injury. But the incident is renewing concerns about school safety and what can be done about it. And it was just so crazy. Like, I've never seen anything like that. The fights began inside school and spilled outside as school safety officers worked to calm things down. Students dismissed early seemed visibly shaken. Our CSD, you know, you know yeah, we just need to do better. That's Our CSD, it. we need to do better. And we need some more help in this school to make sure we get the stuff that we need and the things done. School safety has been a concern of district leaders and the teachers union since the start of the year. A teacher at Franklin was injured trying to break up a fight. In response, the teachers union sent a list of requests to the superintendent. The union president says none of its requests were met. Now he plans to use upcoming contract talks to prioritize safety. One of our key priorities will be to specifically reiterate and demand that they finally hire the needed professionals to help our children be safe and to prevent this kind of outbreaks of violence. Urbanski is calling for the district to hire more school counselors and social workers to address what he calls the emotional needs of students. In an interview with 13 Wham in October, Superintendent Dr. Leslie Meyer Small said the district is trying to do that, but said a shortage of workers is making it difficult. In November, the district's response to violence concerns prompted a no-confidence vote in the superintendent by the teachers' union. Now, Adam Urbanski's tone seems more conciliatory. I don't think that what we should do in response to this is to uh, fix blame on anyone, but simply 
take this as an indication that young people need support systems. The teachers union also requested the presence of Rochester police officers outside of several high schools at arrival and dismissal. The contract for that expired in December and the district told 13 WAM it will not be renewed. One board member who opposed it said the police presence did not prevent incidents. Millions of parents will likely be facing a new decision soon. Pfizer is seeking emergency use authorization for its COVID vaccine for children ages six months to five years. It is the only age group not yet eligible for vaccination, but this could pave the way for the very youngest Americans to start receiving shots about a month from now. 13 WAMS Jane Chaco asked some local parents if they would vaccinate their young ones. Jane? That's right, Doug. Extra doses for that age group could be approved by the end of the month. And some parents I spoke to say they can't wait for the day their youngest can be safe against COVID-19. Once the Pfizer COVID vaccine is approved for children under five, Pamela Steele says her three-year-old daughter, Juniper, would get the shot. I've had all three Pfizer vaccines myself. Um, and if I would do it for myself, there was no reason that I wouldn't do it for her. She says it would be an easy decision knowing she would be safe from the virus and its variant. So just to have that peace of mind that she has that added layer of protection on top of wearing a mask when we go out, it's our best defense. Seth Palmer says looking over the research was important to making this decision. I think we wanted to see what some of the clinical trials were about um, and what some of the results of, of those might be. Our son Thomas is two and he was three months old when everything shut down. I'm really excited for him to become a young child with memories that aren't linked to the pandemic. As Pfizer seeks emergency use authorization for this age group, the Monroe County Health Department is trying to get older children vaccinated. We know our vaccination rates in general for the county are good, but when we look at city school district, we're seeing maybe 50, 55 percent of kids uh, who are eligible. So that's five and older uh, are vaccinated. And so that's still you know, really a long way to go. Only a few showed up at tonight's vaccination clinic for 12 years and older at Franklin campus. Cook encourages families who aren't sure about the vaccine to talk to a medical professional. I think it's really being able to uh, get them to the table, answer their questions openly, honestly, ask them what it is they're concerned about. Um, and then when they're ready, then, you know, then be able to vaccinate them right away. And these Pfizer shots contain a much smaller dose, just one-tenth of the dose given to adults. Pfizer is seeking authorization for a two-dose regimen. They're expected to release more information on a third dose in March or April.